Okay, and welcome back to the World War II lesson. Uh, as you know, we were, we were talking about some of the, uh, the aspects of the European campaign in the last video. And what we're going to do is kind of finish up the lesson on the war itself with the Pacific campaign. And the Pacific campaign is, uh, it ended later than the American campaign did. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of go over just the basics of it. And there are a lot of little conflicts all the way through. We're just going to hit the main ones and continue on. And then we're also going to do a little bit with the nuclear power and stuff like that. So the Pacific Campaign started uh, December 7th, 1941. And, and what happened was is that early on in, in the Pacific Campaign, because we have to remember that Japan is already it's, it's running out of resources. It doesn't have the oil supply it had back in 1940 and 1941. So uh, during Midway, the, the, you can watch this video here more about uh, Midway. It, it's sort of the Asian turning point. And after this, uh, the United States has a pretty uh, progressive and steady movement throughout the Pacific campaign. Uh, Midway, essentially what happened was is that there was a, a large attacking Japanese force that was coming in and, of course, wanting to expand eastward and the American Air Force because what happened during Pearl Harbor I didn't talk about this before what happened during Pearl Harbor was the battleships were completely destroyed because of the the invasion of the uh, Japanese forces the the bombings but but what happened was is that suspiciously at Pearl Harbor four aircraft carriers all four aircraft carriers by the way that were owned by the United States at the time were out on practice. They were out doing missions and, and, and practicing around in the, in, the, in the Pacific Ocean. So they weren't bombed. The, the carriers were not bombed. But at, at the, on December 8th, when they were assessing the damage, the United States was very, very afraid of, of the, the, the Japanese Navy. They didn't have any more. <laughs> they didn't have any more battleships. And the, the Japanese had several. But what became a big issue, and you'll see this in, in the battle when you watch the video, in, in Midway, the the American Air Force really took over and, and tor the torpedo planes would, would completely decimate uh, Japanese forces. And, and basically what happens is, is you get... Um, you see, that happens in June of 1942, and then all the way down here uh, in, in August 1942 to February 1943, you have the Battle of Guadalcanal. Now, at this time, and, and all the way until the end of the, the European conflict in, the, in May of 1945, the United States is only using about 20% of all of its military resources in the con in the Pacific conflict. So a lot of these battles here, you have the Battle of Guadalcanal, you have the Battle of Iwo Jima in 1945. These were only with a very few amount of forces compared to what's going on in Europe as well as, you know... Um, equipment and tanks and stuff like that and and Guadalcanal was specifically really really deadly for American forces to enter the island now these are marines that are going in here and trying to um, hold or keep these islands from the Japanese and the Japanese of course are, are very well dug in and, and you'll see that when you watch the video and so the United States takes it it's called the island hopping campaign so uh, you go on you have the Battle of the Coral Sea right here as well which was a, a, a win for the United States and, and as you go further and further and you can kind of see the the United States forces taking care of um, New Guinea and trying to take the Dutch East Indies and the the Australian Empire as well or the Australians are trying to help um, over here in China and Mongolia you can see they're trying to fight back the Japanese forces in uh, the eastern parts of China as well. and and of course we, we heard before that the Soviet Union in 19 43 is going to help with uh, Manchuria as well. So, so the pressure is really building on Japan to 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 fall. But but the Japanese, of course, are very well dug in in all of these areas, and a lot of these battles take months and months and months and months to complete. Uh, so, as 1943 goes into 1944, you finally have uh, there's a few ish things going on. They call it the the Marianas Turkey Shoot, which was. Um, out here in, in the Marianas, there was a lot of uh, Japanese 
Japanese planes from their own aircraft carriers as well as battleships and the United States were, was really just laying it on the Japanese forces all the way through here no, even though the, the Japanese were giving them a very tough battle and in 1944 and 1945 the Americans will once again invade the Philippines taking back the island and Douglas MacArthur is there is a picture of him returning to the Philippines in 1945 so um, as, as, as time is dwindling and it's getting closer to 1945 and the wars on both fronts are not looking too good for the Axis, uh, the Japanese losing supplies and, and uh, running out of food just to feed their, the home country of Japan is trying to take more desperate action to destroy the United States' um, air f or not their air force but their navy so basically what they start doing is 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 filling up planes with a, a, just a one-way trip of gas and the japanese would essentially launch these kamikaze techniques against the american forces now kamikaze is an old japanese word that was created during a battle between the chinese and the japanese actually and what happened was is the chinese were trying to invade the japanese this is back in the the 12th century or so the, the Chinese is, are trying to attack the Japanese but then a large typhoon comes and wipes out the, the Chinese um, the Chinese Navy coming to uh, invade Japan and we we would call that the divine wind and, and and the Japanese word for that is kamikaze so so the Japanese inspired by this tactic basically flew planes into <laughs> into air, um, naval craft battleships and destroyers and and a whole bunch of other <laughs> vessels i apologize so that it was a really serious issue but but the the united states was making steady progress until about um 1945 in february when when the battle of iwo jima occurred and both the americans and japanese lost about 22,000 soldiers but there was only i mean there was only so many Japanese soldiers stationed on the island and only 216 remained at that point so so all obviously some of these were Americans that died but think of all the Japanese and, and the amount of people that were left and the rest were assumed dead so there was at least 15,000 Japanese on the island of Iwo Jima and uh, oh this video is not working very interesting um you could probably still watch it through YouTube that's where I found it I would search uh, Iwo Jima World War II and we come to a sticky situation in the Pacific campaign in 1945 um, because the United States really has only a few options to deal with Japan. Uh, one of them is to invade Japan. With th and they estimated that it would be about 3.5 million soldiers that would need to be involved in the invasion. And all those soldiers that were fighting in Europe would then have to be trained on Japan and they were estimating about 1.5 American soldiers dying, and, and God knows how many Japanese might have died in this invasion. And, I mean, the, at this time, I mean, the Americans are bombing so many parts of Japan. Tokyo was almost completely obliterated. And um, you see these two symbols here for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And what we're going to do is just take a nice little um, uh, detour because we have to understand, well, you know, lots of people know about the atomic weapons of and how we dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But to really understand what happened, we have to go back to the beginning, uh, back to 1942, about the Manhattan Project. Now, the Manhattan Project was an American-based project that was obsessed with finding out how to make a nuclear bomb, or I should say, um, how to create nuclear fission which was then used to make the nuclear bomb so we have these two incredibly important and influential individuals in in the manhattan project of course you have albert einstein with this with this theory of relativity and and so many other contributions to science and you have enrico fermi who was actually one of the first men to to split the atom as they say which was basically at a shooting a neutron at a at a had a radioactive element or an isotope and and that would create a chain reaction that was this guy right here Enrico Fermi very 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 important man and actually there are so many other important members in the Manhattan Project you have people like uh, Oppenheimer and so many other scientists at the time I mean it is it is unbelievable 
to think about what how many intelligent minds actually went into this and and basically the united states was terrified of advanced weaponry from the nazis actually the germans themselves in 1942 uh, german scientists were reporting that they they could um actually and not just theoretically um split the atom they could shoot a neutron and, and, and create a chain reaction it was a huge issue so the united states knowing that it, this might be a race it might be a race for the the germans and the americans to create the atomic bomb i mean think about um the the, the german luftwaffe dro dropping a bomb over over london or even over uh dc if there's a, a a waylaid ship out here i mean serious implications for the americans i mean lots of fear about what what could happen so the manhattan project takes about three years to complete and you can kind of see that where where some of the main headquarters were you have oak ridge and chicago at the at the actually the argon national laboratory um lots of places they actually at uh berkeley uc berkeley and of course the main sort of um the main sort of complex at los alamos laboratory so you the manhattan project really plays a lot into the next part of the war because as you see um in august 9th 1945 uh hiroshima is bombed hiroshima is dropped on by an atomic bomb named fat man and now, at the time, the United States only had enough nuclear fuel for two bombs. Fat Man and Little Boy were their names. And, and you can actually take a, a video. I, I would suggest to watch this after this, uh, this, this lesson and, and really understand some of the destruction that, that was caused by this. Now, at this time, FDR has died. So uh, Harry Truman, who's the 33rd president of the United States, he was the best vice president at the time, uh, and then became president, had to make the decision to drop the bomb. And two days later, on August 11th, Nagasaki was bombed as well. And you can kind of see, we'll go back here and look, there's 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 uh, Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki, where they were in comparison to Tokyo. And roughly 200,000 people died instantly. Instantly. Instantly died because of two giant bombs dropped now that was devastation that we have never seen since we've never had to see that kind of devastation again on in a single day and and the thing is you could see like the nuclear burn victims and, and look at the destruction of nagasaki i mean the city was completely obliterated and so many more japanese people suffer from from the from nuclear mutations of dna and things like that and, and radiation poisoning and and burn victims at the time than than ever before and it was this huge international outcry against the bomb not the, the bomb but the bomb the the atomic bomb and, and harry truman had to make the call and and he said his his justification for for dropping the atomic bombs even though it caused all this destruction was to avoid even further loss of life for not only the american forces invading the island but for the rest of japan because who knows what how how tough the japanese would have fought they might have fought to the last man and and the americans had to assume that considering the the previous battles that that were fought i mean if you remember okinawa or not okinawa but iwo jima and and how serious that was and, and afterwards, after these two bombs were dropped, you know, the United States basically used the threat of, oh, we will drop more bombs. We, we have this ability. And the issue, of course, was that after they dropped these two bombs, they, did, they didn't really have any others. It was just kind of a scare tactic that was used. And in August 15th, 1945, Emperor Hirohito, Hirohito is surrendering to Douglas MacArthur, the Allied General or Admiral of the United States Navy. So... This, this, this event here, the, the disaster at the dawn of the atomic age, this will end the war itself. And, and, and of course, lots of things happen after it. And, and, but, but, but this is it right here. We, we went through the entire war from beginning to end. And you have the three major campaigns, the African campaign, the European campaign, and the Pacific campaign. And, and all of them really do play together. So kind of understand, you know, go through these timelines again and, and understand when, when they happen through time. And I, I split them up for easeability f to look at. So um, next time we'll talk about the home front in America. And we'll see you in the next video.